you know, no ABV kick. So we're going to have our man, uh, one of my first guests, Tim Rita, uh, talk about that. Then I've got my other special guest, Robin uh, St. Pierre from Drew Estate. We'll be talking cigars with Robin. Uh, as always, you know, we've got my man, you know, the wizard, uh, always hanging out with us. And uh, more importantly, what's our stick for the night? We have a beautiful, beautiful Herrera Esteli Brazilian Maduro. And uh, I've got a couple different sizes here. So we'll be, uh, we'll be enjoying that together. And most importantly, we got that Ask Frankie Drank section, right? Our big swag giveaway. So you get this beautiful sticks and stips sidecar cutter. Uh, this thing's beautiful. Thank you, Joey, for designing such a beautiful product. We got our little uh, Frankie Drank's uh, little sticks and sips uh, lid for you. And we got a couple of, uh, of our rocks glasses uh, for you guys. So all you got to do, ask Frankie Drank's, hashtag ask Frankie Drank's, and you can ask question to any uh, of our guests as well. And if your question gets chosen, you get the swag pack. So uh, listen, let's get the party started here. Um, and uh, I, I'm going to go around the Zoom lounge. So I'm going to start off with uh, with the wizard. Uh, welcome back, wizard. Good to see you, man. Good to be back in the seat again and doing it. And see, good to see everybody in the chat room loading in, saying hi from All everywhere. Right. And, uh, this one's a real, I've been looking forward to this. We've had a lot of comments about you know, low ABV and, and non-alcoholic spirits uh, ever since we started the show. So it's great to, you know, finally get Tim on with us to, to talk talk us through it. So it's uh, exciting. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I'm, I'm thrilled. Uh, Robin uh, St. Pierre, all the way from, uh, from the frozen tundra of Michigan. Uh, welcome, Robin. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited about this episode myself. So... So listen, we, we, we started, we started last week with our first live episode, second live episode, and I'm super happy to see you on this show with us. And last but not least, my man, Tim Rita, all the way from, uh, from freezing Vegas there where it's a balmy <laughs> 70, you know, don't yeah, have something like that. <laughs> How, you doing? How you doing, Tim? It's good Pleasure to see you, man. To be on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank saying. you for joining us, man. We, we got a, I've got a plethora of questions and, and, and things that we want to talk about, but listen, you know, this is the Drew Estate virtual happy hour and what's a happy hour without a cocktail. So check it out. We got our, first, our, our cocktail for the evening, our special man, you know, cause you know, I got to run the house special, right? So the house special tonight is a liar's Boulevardier. So I'm going to ask my man, Jack, if he'd roll that beautiful, like cocktail footage. And, uh, and there we go. This is super simple. The beautiful uh, Liars American Malt. Uh, one part, you know, so if you guys do one ounce, it's one ounce or one and a half ounce. And, uh, same thing for Liars Aperitif Rosso, um, which is a, like a Campari. And then we have the Italian Orange, which kind of is a little bit like Aperol and Vermouth somewhere in that vicinity. So you're getting all those beautiful flavors of a Boulevardier. Um, you want to go ahead and get plenty of ice on that. You want to stir it around, uh, give it a nice, uh, you know, nice good stir. You want it to chill it, and you also want to make sure all the, all the, the liquids get incorporated together with each other. And you want to pour it on a nice, uh, nice block of ice, and then uh, get a little orange. You know, here I'm being fancy here. I'm setting, I'm setting myself on fire, uh, you know, and, uh, and and do a little flamed orange with it, which I thought was a, a really nice. Uh, aromatic part of it so uh i'm going to raise my glass to everybody and have this beautiful uh liars boulevardier and uh for those of you that didn't catch all the ingredients i'm going to ask jack if he doesn't mind showing them up you know hey real easy little uh liars american malt aperitif rosso italian orange orange peel and all you got to do is stir it together uh all ingredients in the glass super simple guys and you want to garnish it with that little uh orange peel one of the fastest cocktails you can make. And you can ask my man, Joey, when he's talking about making Negronis, how quickly he can make one. Uh, so uh, so congratulations and a little cheers to everybody out there that's joining us on Sticks and Sips Land. Salut. To a great 2021. Um, and uh, without further ado, uh, this, this is a gentleman that needs kind of a little bit of an introduction here because not only is he the brand ambassador at Liars, um, he's an award-winning mixologist, uh, though he doesn't like to 
you know, it could be known. But, you know, we'll ask him about that big tiki statue he's got behind him later. Um, you know, Tim, Tim started working uh, early at an early age. I, I believe he was about nine when he was working at the Honolulu, uh, you know, at the, I'm sorry, the, the Haile Kalua uh, Lemur's Bar, right? Lemur's Lounge. So this is world famous place. And, and, uh, and we'll ask him about that later in 2014. Uh, Tim was also uh, named one of the most important mixologists in, in the top bartenders to watch. And, uh, and he's collected a lot more accolades along the way. Uh, he's a staple in, in Vegas and, uh, and uh, we are, and I am super honored to call him my friend and super honored to have him here on Sticks and Sips. So welcome, Tim. What's going on, brother? How's it going? Pleasure again to be on. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, hope everybody's enjoying the Boulevard area. All right, so I'm going to take a little sip. I know and I with am. that, I'm going to have a little <laughs> sip. So Tim, please tell us the story how you got uh, involved in the bar world. Uh, you know, because my, my little story about uh, you and, uh, and, and, you know, being a bartender in Hawaii is probably short selling you. <laughs> um, I was going through uh, my current uh, career was at a crossroads. Um, my dad was a bartender before. He used to have a bartending school in Hawaii. And I just, uh, I always asked and admired uh, that job. So I, I tried my hands in it, uh, found the job at the Hale Kalani, starting off as a bar back and worked my way up to uh, being the lead over there. Uh, that's a quick story. <laughs> that, that was quick, man. I mean, so uh, so tell us about that that lovely tiki statue behind you, man. I mean, how'd that happen? Oh, yeah, this guy. So um, this was from one of the the many. Uh, so I got bit with the uh, competition bug early on, and it was you know first competition I did. It was in Las Vegas. Um, uh, I believe it was a shake it up um i got my butt kicked it was just you know such an eye opener but so cool to see like the competition that what everybody brought and then ever since that i couldn't say no to any dance we'll just leave it at that this one behind me was a dance i was in a few years uh going i finally was able to uh crack the crack the number four spot I got second place, but uh, I was still living in the, I was already here actually in uh, Las Vegas. And then um, a friend called and he was like, hey, you're still qualified to compete again. So why not? Why not? I mean, go to Hawaii, compete in the world with my time. No brainer. And there was a uh, prize money for second, uh, third, second and first. So like me, I'm like gunning for third, <laughs> but um, I'm getting second and uh it's a cool little trophy there. Cash prize was uh, $5,000, not too shabby. Um, I couldn't bring the giant check home. I really wanted to. That was like the most important thing. But yeah, that was my story about the, the tiki. Well, you know, f f 5K goes a long way, you know, so. Uh, so Buys a lot uh, of my this, ties. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. So like, you know, tell us like what was what was your 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 Mai Tai recipe? So the Mai Tai recipe, it was, um, I called it uh, Papa's Mai Tai, so after my grandfather. Uh, basically what I did was I used a lot of local ingredients from Hawaii that was literally, like I could find it in my backyard, like uh, calamansi and such. I always would use uh, some kind of calamansi. That was like my little thing in Hawaii. But it was just, you know, you, you the thing about competitions is you learn you learn the do's and don'ts. I guess I've done it enough to where if I didn't get it by then, you know, what am I doing? But you're reinventing the cocktail, but you're still staying sh true to what it is. And basically, I just, you know, took each component, made it my own, made it, you gave it like a cool, cool factor and presented right. And it was, uh, you know, that's, that's how I got it. It, it was one of those, um, I stayed classic uh, Trader Vic style, um, but I had to use the sponsored rums, of course. Um, and I actually, uh, I think what my little edge was the ice. So ice is very important. Um, the ice they were using wasn't the greatest. And for me being 
in the last heat, I was able to, you know, identify that. So instead of shaking what was my original, I ended up uh, throwing the Mai Tai. Um, never did it before, so I did a quick video, looked up YouTube and just learned how to do it on the fly. Somehow pulled it off like I was doing it for 10 years. And yeah, uh, it came out exactly as I envisioned in my head. So that was that's, that's fantastic. Mai Tai story. God bless you. <laughs> Yeah, no one appreciates good ice more than Joe than uh, the wizard. So, oh, I've been known to and cause a, a quite a stir when I don't get correct ice. I'll say that. Oh, ice Definitely. is yeah, everything. It, I, I I get midnight phone calls. You know, like, hey, who's <laughs> that dude that's at this bar claims he knows you and says that the ice is subpar? I'm <laughs> like, oh, that's probably the wizard. That's <laughs> Joe. That's Joey being a douche. <laughs> So, uh, so listen, Tim, one of, one of the things like you were the, uh, you know, this is kind of, uh, I'm, I'm, before we get to liars, I'm going to add one little piece here. You're also like the official ice carver uh, for the uh, Golden Knights, uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. So uh, what the hell is the official ice carver for the Golden Knights, dude? <laughs> what the hell is that? I mean, were you out there on the freaking rink carving that ice up or what? So basically I had like my own little piece of the rink and I cut it up down. So I took a block every night at my bar, which um, they built this amazing ice station just for me. You would have loved it. Uh, uh, but um, yeah, and I cut ice per guess, but I also, um, there was, you know, of course there's a lot that goes behind all of it where I was able to have pre-cut pieces, but that was with the awesome um, partnership with uh, Ice Occasions, uh, Premium Ice here in Las Vegas, which you do. They're, they're the best. That, that's all I got to say about them. But yeah, um, official <laughs> ice carver. What that really means is I'm the only one that didn't cut any fingers off or stab myself with the, uh, the ice pick. So I passed. I was like, okay, he's, he's, he's still good. So I still got him. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, he, so just, just so everybody knows, he's, he's got all his digits intact. So listen, to, let's get to the moment we've all been waiting for, you know, uh, tell us, tell us about Liars. Tell us about the company. So Liars Spirit Company. Um, I joined last year, um, and at the time, um, it's still now. Uh, the non-alcoholic uh, spirit category was um, fairly new. Um, what Liars does that it allows you to indulge and create, drink, enjoy a cocktail that you would normally have and find in any bar. Um, for, for example, I always use the Boulevardier. Um, I love a Boulevardier. Uh, these days I can do at least four and be somewhat okay, you know, remember the night before, but you know, you can only do that uh, so much. Um, what Liars does is it gives you the opportunity to one, cut all the alcohol out and, or you can lower the ABV, but the, cool thing with why it allows you to do it is because you it offers the same visual uh same essential oils and extracts uh same flavor profile that like for example an american malt whiskey would have but just without the uh, ethanol so without that little kick in the head at the end so to speak but uh so, yeah, I, mean, I, I love it um i've been doing like every cocktail I can think of. And it's the, the beauty of it is um, spirit still shines. And like the Mai Tai, you know, the daiquiri, you know, the Boulevardier, you know, still tastes, smells, feels like it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's one of the, the cool parts is that like, um, it actually has a viscosity to it. Mm -hmm. So when people are trying it, 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 it does have a, the viscous nature that that regular spirits do as well, um, especially when you're talking about modifiers, um, where where you need that, you know. And even if we were swapping out modifiers uh, to lower the ABV of a cocktail, you still need those modifiers to be um, in the same. You know, they're not wa they're not watering the drink down any further. They, they still have a, a a substantial nature to them. So um, Let's start with the uh, with the first three that were in the cocktail. So we we had the American malt, and and you briefly said, uh, you know, this is uh, the Liars version of of American malt whiskey. So 
Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. So the American malt, um, amazing. As you know, like if you can see, you know, the color, the taste, even the nose, you know, gets you on it. Uh, pretty much allows you to enjoy uh, whiskey. Um, I like just uh, doing a cocktail with just any cocktail and having people drink it and then tell me what they think about it and then I drop it on them. Yeah, by the way, there's no alcohol in that. Um, they, every, everything they did was they tried to capture all um, components and aspects of oils, like how I mentioned, to deliver um, an American malt whiskey designed to do cocktails. So each each one have, you know, they, they both keep the integrity of what they are. Um, another like cool little uh, addition to like uh, the, the, the display or um, the presentation. Uh, each has a different uh, animal that signifies each uh, spirit. Like for the American malt, it's a, a big bear. So, I think a smoky the bear, uh, so you you get that enough smokiness to you know know that you're you're sipping on a whiskey uh, spirit. So that's that's uh, basically how uh, what they thought about when uh, they're creating cool. this. Now, uh, when we get to the uh, the aperitif rosso, uh, I think Joey was saying like because this is like the the Campari, right? Absolutely, yeah. I tried all three of them. Uh, actually, all actually all of the five that you have there, Frankie. I tried them all straight first. I always try, I, I drink most spirits straight first before I even have a cocktail, or even alongside of a cocktail. Usually, when I have them, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So the the Rosso was great. It was like, wow, that's Campari, like that's really cool. So you could you could do a you know a faux Negroni essentially with that with no problem mm -hmm. at all. So that's great. I love that one a lot. Right, and we would do it like we would do it. I've got the I've got the London Dry Spirit yeah. here, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. or the Dry London Spirit, and uh, you know just get these three, and you've got your uh, your Negroni, you know. So and I think too maybe totally. because of the the no ABV on it, I think these lend themselves, at least in my mind, not having done it yet, to adding some bubbles to it, adding either some sparkling water or you know seltzer or what you know. Uh, you know, a fever tree, uh, mm -hmm. like that even, even makes it even more expressive. It really then brings the flavor and the nose out. I love Robin. Right. Robin. And I don't know if you can see Robin. <laughs> Robin is smoking herself out <laughs> here in, <laughs> in, the, uh, in the chat. <laughs> it's awesome. So, uh, but Joey, that's a good point. And, and Tim, um, you know, as uh, as cigar smokers, you know, uh, obviously it takes a while to enjoy a cigar. It, it, it takes its time, um, and above all, you want to take your time. Um, so sometimes I've I've always been an advocate of effervescence and tall drinks for uh, mm -hmm. for cigar smokers. And uh, a lot of times you get hit with, uh, you know, uh, they want a, a low ABV option or no ABV option for a tall drink, and you mm -hmm. can always say, well, you just have some. Uh, ginger ale or club soda, but that stuff can get boring. Um, mm -hmm. But this is a perfect way that you can make that addition and you have like a Campari soda or Italian uh, uh, aperitif and soda or the Italian orange and soda. And, you know, mm -hmm. so you can have options. In fact, really you can do, yeah. uh, it, it expands on that flavor and, and delivers. I know, Robin, what did you make? You made something interesting also. I made the um, Taroko, if I'm saying that right. And it's with the two red ones, with the red and pink one. Um, mm -hmm. And then it has like orange juice, tonic water, and a hint of vanilla with mint. And I used grapefruit because I didn't have the blood oranges. So I figured that would be a good substitute. It's delicious. Fantastic. Looks and great. I like, you know, and I love using the tonic, right, Tim? Yes, the tonic goes perfect with it, especially um, we're... Uh, we're lucky to be uh, partnered with uh, Fever Tree as well. I was uh, talking offline about um, talking about tall drinks with uh, Robin. There's this one uh, cocktail I've been turning everyone on to. It's with our, uh, we have a coffee. It's called the Coffee Original. So it's made with real uh, cold brew, but you mix it with a little bit of lemon, a little bit of simple, and you add it to tonic. So refreshing. Um, 
there's a version of it at the nomads that they uh, serve where I got the idea. So I thought, hey, can I make my own? And you know, it was, it was great. It, you know, follow the lead. The with that, with you know, that being said, you can follow the lead of any bar. Um, it, ha- it doesn't have to be like big and prestigious, like the you know the awesome nomad. It can be any bar, your neighborhood bar, and um, you can create your own version or non-alcoholic version of the cocktail you had at the bar at home. So. We, we, we made this so everyone can enjoy it. Um, this will be the new bartender's best friend, but also um, before the, we got on, I do a, a mixology uh, session for people that buy the product online. So if you buy one of our products, you can sign up for a free Zoom uh, mixology uh, session with one of the brand ambassadors. And it's really cool just seeing um, how, you know, I've had people with bars that are like more, you know, amazing than some uh, bartenders bars or, and then you got, you know, the people that just want to try a cocktail who's never tried it before. So it's, it, we try to reach out to everyone and, you know, guide you through our life journey, you know. I think it's an awesome option. I wish I would have had it. I was, there was years ago when it, where there was a man, seven or eight year period, I didn't drink at all, nothing. Oh, wow. uh, but I was still hanging out in bars. I was in a band. Uh, and that would have been a great option. They didn't have this then, you know, so you you were sipping on, you know, water with lime all night and it was just like, whatever, but mm-hmm. that's a great option. So if you're, you know, you don't miss out hanging with, with your friends at a bar if this is available. So that's a great option for people. Uh, so you don't lose out. You don't want to be the, you know, mm-hmm. the left out friend who didn't make it because you don't want to be in a bar all night with them. You know, and, being- and for those of you guys that are asking about yeah. fever tree, uh, that's, you know, look, I gotta have fever tree, you know, in the yeah, house. So, you, you know, we got a little, it's yeah. An so, so this is a club soda. Yeah, every, every supermarket. So, um, great club soda, uh, great tonic. And then we've got the elder flower tonic. So you guys can play around. They've got the, uh, the Mediterranean tonic and, you know, and then they've got a couple of little options, um, yeah, that, that help you uh, create, man, because you can uh, like I could probably make like three different highballs with these and play around, and that's just keeping club soda as a base. Then we could do swap out tonic for, you know, the uh, the Italian uh, orange and stuff like that, and anything that keeps it refreshing, especially when you're having a cigar. I think it's fantastic, and I think people would love just club soda and the American malt or the uh, or mm-hmm. the the uh, the dark uh, dark cane spirit. A little, you know, just some club soda, uh, maybe a little so great with cola orange. As well too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so g- it gives you that that uh, that nice experience. Again, giving you the option with those things. So, uh, you know, our uh, the um, the Italian Rosso, we were kind of like divided. Just like, is that the target is vermouth or aperol or somewhere in the middle? <laughs> so the the Rosso is uh, it's to uh, it's for vermouth. So the sweet vermouth. But then it's it's mm-hmm. amazing how um you know everyone's palate picks up, uh, takes you a different place and like how you mentioned it, uh, reminded me of Campari. There's very much very much similarities to Campari as well. So, right. um yeah that 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 was fantastic that you know you pulled out those notes. But then the Italian orange was basically to capture that same um, profile, but more uh, I'd say it's closer to like an apérol. Um, for sure, especially because of the um, the orange base. But yeah, you guys are awesome. I mean, so, uh, you, no, we're you we're, we're super excited. Every, you, you you delivered everything. <laughs> you hit every point that that yeah, I would use no, no, Like how no, you mentioned about not yeah. yeah ben, you, no, you mentioned about not drinking. You totally bring the party. You know, you're you're included. You know, everyone is included. Everyone's enjoying, and then you can you know you can enjoy that great cocktail by the great bartender at the same time too. So it, it's right. It's, I, I, I love, I love the options, man. I love the <clears> options <throat> of being <throat> able to play with all different things. And again, uh, for people that, that are looking for a, a, a different option that, that we could do that, you know, it's great. I think that's fantastic. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a minute here. Uh, I'm going to steal a little bit of your thunder cause I don't put you on the spot, but kind of going through the lineup, by the way, uh, Go to liars.com, L-Y-R-E-S.com, and you'll get to see the mixology section, um, which Tim was talking about. It's in the top uh, menu bar. 
and you can sign up for those uh, cool sessions, man. I think that's fantastic. So I'm going to go through what you guys are offering. You, you're, you're offering the Dry London Spirit, no particular order, right? Uh, the American Malt, uh, the Italian Orange, the Aperitif Rosso. You also have an Aperitif Dry. Is that correct? Yes, we do. Yes, cool. we do. So, and it's then we have a White King Spirit, <laughs> which I don't have. Um, the Dark King Spirit, and you got a Spiced King Spirit too. Um, yes. The Coffee uh, Original, which is uh, the one mm -hmm. we were talking to Robin about. Um, which I think is fantastic. You got the absinthe, you said that's coming out. Um, mm -hmm. You have uh, the Amaretti in an orange sec as well, Amaretti. right? I think, yes. I think I got them all. Am I missing so coming one? out, uh, no, you, got, you got it like some, uh, so. You yeah, got something coming out, so like let us know, let us know. Yeah. Yeah. There's the absinthe coming out and also uh, ready for drinks that are pretty cool where um, it's not just your, you know, your typical ones. So being non-alcoholic, we, we kind of, um, I can't really say exactly what it is yet, but um, it's it's specific cocktails and they're they're all quite delicious. Um, I think in the US I should be getting it sometime, maybe uh, I think March, April is a good, uh, good little cult there, but uh, you can go online and check it out. It, it's super cool. cool. I, I love how we're covering all aspects of uh, beverage and spirit. So, well, I, I I think that's great, especially with the, uh, you know, the explosion of the white claw, uh, which is everybody's <laughs> yes. favorite friend these days. You know, which will probably go the mm -hmm. the route of the Zimas of the world. But you know, for the time being, we'll enjoy it. You know, and because uh, uh, it really it really did change a lot of things. It, it brought attention to people looking for alternatives. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I'm glad that you guys are, are, are leading the way with that. All right, my man. So listen, uh, I want to thank you for, uh, for jumping on and we got some questions for you in a little bit. So just stick around, you know, and, uh, and again, my man, thank you so much for being uh, part of Sticks and Sips. I know you're, you know, we, we got you going into the cigar world and we're all excited about that. We'll talk about that in the, you know, on the next piece. Uh, so Sounds great. without further ado, without further ado, the lovely, all the way from the frozen tundra of Michigan, uh, she is, uh, does everything for Drew Estate, but you know, her, uh, I'll let her tell you her official title because they, they tell me your title changes every week uh, <laughs> or does it, <laughs> but uh, I want to welcome Robin St. Pierre uh, to the show. Robin, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm uh, Robin St. Pierre. I am a retail sales specialist for Drew Estate. I cover Benny's in the Chicago area in Illinois and Wild Bill's, um, which is the majority Michigan. Um, they just opened a store in the UP. Also, we have stores. They have stores in Ohio and they're spreading to Indiana as well. Why don't you tell us what UP means for us people down here in the South? Don't know. It means Upper Peninsula. <laughs> it means Upper Peninsula. So basically, thank you. Another, that you little know, piece. It's a piece of land that's above us that's not connected to us. It's above the glove. It goes like this. It's kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's awesome. That's awesome. You need to trade like that. <laughs> yeah. There's the people with bumper stickers on their cars that are just two hands. Nice. Above yeah. I love it. So, uh, you know, so can you drive there? Do you have to go through Canada? Can we uh, swim across? The, you got to take the bridge. Very nice. Very <laughs> nice. So anyway, yeah, uh, so Robin, I mean, you Robin's smoking a, uh, a very smoky cigar tonight. <laughs> yeah, I'm in my basement. I'm smoking the Herrera Lonsdale Brazilian Maduro. All right, so, so for, every, for everyone at home that missed that part, it would be like, huh? And it's just... Hold on, let the camera get on me for a minute. I'll do it. It's so funny. So <laughs> nobody else talk, otherwise the camera's going to go elsewhere. I've been laughing offline. I was like, I see the smoke. It, it probably almost Hang on, you're not supposed to talk. I don't know if the camera's on me or not. There you go. Yeah, it was, it was, it was. <laughs> so yeah, you can go, go like ahead this. and just there, there you go there <laughs> so listen robin uh i know you've got uh you know our featured cigar tonight 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's the Herrera Esteli Brazilian Maduro. Uh, you know, truly, I think one of the coolest blends. So first, I'm going to ask you, how's it going with the cocktail you make? Because you made something awesome. Yes, um, it's a great pairing. It's definitely, um, it takes from the, the bold leathery flavors. I make it from the cigar and it pairs it with something sweet. But there's also other flavors coming off of this um, with the vanilla and the, the citrusness. It's, it's a great pairing. Absolutely. Very cool. Really, so you, I really want to give, I really want to give you props because I am sick and tired of pairing with Coke or Dr. Pepper. And I recently, since my first episode of Sticks and Sips, have, have dived into to mocktails. And Isola Woods has helped me a lot with coming up with ideas. And then um, I was invited to the show for episode two with you guys. And um, it's really cool. I went on your website. You got all the recipes. And it really simplified everything for me because I've never made mixed drinks or cocktails. So I didn't have any experience. I just mix two different juices together and call it a day, you know, and put some fruit in it and it looked cute, you know, and this really, it gives me the feel like, like you said, like I fit in, you know, and I've spent a lot of time getting drinks from restaurants and plastic cups. So when your recipes gave me a glass to put it in and how to give you the whole feel was like, I really appreciate it. That's cool. That's cool. I, I, I love to hear that, you know, and you know, when That's we, great. when you've been on the show, we, we talk about like, you know, other pairings and stuff. And, you know, there's only so much you could do with coffee. There's only so much you could do with tea. Yeah. Um, only so far you go with soda, but like all of a sudden now we can grab a little bit of tea, a little bit of coffee, a little bit of liars, you know, some tonics, some, you know, and, and really, really start to create uh, something new. And, and I really do like that because at the end of the day, um, it gives us some options, especially when we're having a cigar, especially the, the Herrera. Uh, Brazilian Maduro. So I'm going to ask Jack uh, for everybody out there to let's throw up that uh, beautiful slide there. Uh, you know, talking about like the, uh, you know, what what exactly is a Brazilian Maduro? Well, first of all, you get that Brazilian Matafina wrapper. It's on it has a beautiful flavor uh, to it. The binders Connecticut Broadleaf. And then uh, finally, we got that Nicaraguan filler. And, um, and this blend part of that, you know, the Habano Brazilian uh, Maduro Norteño Miami line under Herrera Esteli and you know we had our big freestyle live last week we kind of were diving into different uh you know different options uh or different pairings but really to hear Willie talk about them was fantastic but uh Robin what's like your favorite aspect of the uh Brazilian Maduro that you like it's bold um and it has a lot a lot of different flavors that pop out and it's not like one dimensional, like it has flavors throughout the entire cigar. It changes flavors halfway through and then changes again. And it do, it's not a boring cigar whatsoever. It's one of my favorite Herreras. And I love the Lonsdales too. Uh, Lonsdales you know, are one. Yeah. yeah. Every, you know, listen, for all you guys that are not on the Lonsdale train, stay off because, you know, we've got limited supply. You know, and, uh, and, and we're us. trying to get some in-house, you know, so just letting you guys know out there, uh, you know, uh, I, I personally, I, I agree with you, uh, Joey, you have a couple of, of, uh, of comments on the Brazilian Maduro yourself, because, you know, we talk a lot about like what that Matafino wrapper you know, what's it really doing in that cigar? Yeah. How is it changing? Yeah, we use we use a lot of Matafina in different blends that we make, uh, you know, whether it's a binder and even in some fillers. Uh, but we never really used it and showcased it off as a wrapper. Uh, part of that was because it never, the Matafina that we were getting and most people were getting just didn't give us the taste that we were looking for. You know, we were looking for something more and like, like anybody that's a producer of something and it, it's our, an artisanal product. Uh, and so our grower took from what we do with T52 and we did a stock cut Brazilian Matafina. And what that does is it really allows all the leaves to extend, it extends their life a bit when it's hanging in the barn and the whole plant. And so the, the, it's even richer and more flavorful and more even aromatic to a, to a point. Uh, and when I know when Willie started blending with it, we were all like, oh my God, this is really, this is unique and special and yummy. And, uh, and it really shines, it really shines. The blend is amazing. You know, having the broadleaf binder gives it a nice little earthy 
you know, chocolatey depth in the backbone. Uh, Nicaraguan fillers can't go wrong, of course. You know, it's got all that body and great flavor. It's just a magical cigar. I love it. It's in the rotation constantly. Uh, the Lonsdale's number one always. I'm smoking a Robusto tonight, and the Robusto's fire. This is fire. Listen, Joey, one of the things we, we were talking about, uh, I think maybe it was before Freestyle Live, and I'm glad you brought up the concept of a stock cut, you know, because, uh, you know, Tim was asking these questions earlier, you know, um, you know, what's that difference? You know, I mean, everybody says, you know, what difference does it really make? It's just a plant that's, that's being, you know, dried. Yeah, no, it's um, a but uh, tell us the difference between a priming and a, and a stock cut, just so people can understand. You know, in general terms, most tobacco plants, they will pick leaves at various stages through the plant and they'll usually, you know, they'll leave the Lijeros for last and because they get the most sun and they, they linger longer basically on the plant absorbing even more of what that plant has to offer. Uh, and, in, and in this case, we don't, we take the entire plant and then we hang that in the barn uh, and it's just, and it, it just changes things. And if you smoke a T52, you will, you can understand what it does. Um, and it changed what Matafina wrappers have been, at least to me and to others that I know, you know, that you, you kind of frack, ah, wasn't a big fan of a Matafina prior, but now with this, it's, it's really, really magical. And it's, and it's so unique and it's great. And like, and like Robin said too, it's so complex. It changes throughout. So it really rewards you as a, as a cigar smoker. It's not one dimensional, you know, you get a lot out of it and it's a, it's a beautiful product. Yeah, I, I think so. And, and, you know, I mean, to get into the whole scientifics of it, right. You know, if you think about like when, you know, when that plant gets its primings, right. Um, that last chunk that's left the, the, you know, the Lajero at the top and, you know, um, it's, it's, it's getting its nutrients it's being pulled through like a plant does from its root system up through the stalk but when you're taking that entire plant and now uh, drawing it you also get the added part of gravity which is also helping uh to pull those nutrients so those nutrients yeah you you basically uh pulled that plant you 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 killed it but those nutrients are still living in the you know in the cell structure of that plant you got gravity helping it to pull down that those last remnants you know as that plant is drawing and i think that's the magic of you know science and uh and all this coming together uh yeah. to create a, a truly amazing amazing product and and, and again like uh, jd has always said like we didn't we didn't invent stock cutting it it's something had that had been done historically but it had kind of gone out of favor uh, and we've kind of, you know, in our own way, brought it back to light in, in utilizing, you know, our stock cut, you know, t for the T52 in Connecticut, and now with the Brazilian Matafina out of Brazil. Um, and again, and, and JD speaks to this, if you've been to a barn smoker and you've seen JD standing in a barn, uh, educating all of us really about what's taking place there and how the barn is like a set of lungs and you're opening and closing that, the slats on the side of a barn, letting in, you know, warmth and humidity and then sealing it off for a while and then opening it up again. And it's keeping that plant in a semi-live state, even though it's been cut from its roots, you know, mm -hmm. so it's still organically changing. Uh, and that, and that's, that's the real magic of, of tobacco right there in that barn. There's so much happening. And that's what makes, you know, smoking cigars and getting into it and getting geeked out on all the little details. So really cool. Absolutely. And, and, uh, and Robin, Ton of smoke. Yeah, dude. Listen, um, you know, because uh, people often ask. You know, um, I, I know a lot of people. Uh, they love uh, their Herrera Sili Habanos. You know, and they kind of a little bit of afraid of the Brazilian Maduro sometimes if they don't know it too well, um, or the Miamis or the Nortenos. Um, so it's good to kind of you know do a little deep dive into. Uh, that Brazilian Maduro and, and, uh, and, you know, Robin, I know you said it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, you call it medium to full. I think it kind of lives, you know, um, you know, cause I think every palate's different, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, it's, it's bold in flavor, but not bold in like strength to punch you in the face. And I think that's kind of the, the thing. Um, and, and tell, tell, tell me more about what you mean. Like when you're talking about bold in flavor. Yeah, so um, 
there's definitely a difference between when people say a cigar is bold compared to um, the uh, full, as in mild, medium, or full. So when it's full, it has like, what I would say is, is more um, nicotine content, where it actually punches you in the face, knocks you on your ass. This does not do that whatsoever, yet it still gives you all the flavors that you may get from a full cigar. So that's where I differentiate the two. Is that what you're asking? Awesome. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm asking. Because sometimes I think when people ask for that one word descriptor, mm -hmm. you know, um, they may understand it as, uh, oh, it, that's that's a that's a you know it's a full body cigar. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Willie often corrects that. He says, listen, it's it's a medium cigar, but it's full flavor. Yes. And uh, and if we get people to understand that. Um, I also think that's why it paired, uh, you know, for me um, with the Boulevardier, um, because that that has a lot of, you know, stronger flavors playing together. Um, it, it's real. It plays around all parts of your mouth. And that's what I think makes the uh, makes it a really nice combo, um, because the Brazil is that beautiful, full flavored cigar, but it's a medium body. It's not going to knock you on your ends. Mm -hmm. Unless you have like a half a box, but you know, which I don't recommend at one time. But anyway, listen, I got Jack yelling at me. Um, <laughs> you know, make sure, yeah, Joe, you didn't remind me, man. Uh, you know, make sure you get your Ask Frankie drinks or Ask uh, the Wizard or Ask Robin or Ask Tim. You know the questions. But before I get to the questions, you it's know, I, listen, time for it's it, it's time for Mescal Minute, baby. You know, minute. I couldn't have an episode without any alcohol. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it, Frankie. I That's, tried. You know, listen, you, I know you tried. I know you tried. But, you know, what would Mescal Minute be until, you know, until, you know, Liars comes out with their any uh, Mescal? So. Oh, there you go. Call me up. I'll help you on that. So tonight, Mescal Minute, Bozal, one of my favorite brands. They make an amazing variety of, of Mescal. Uh, this one current new favorite, the Tobala, which is a, a really cool plant. It's a really tiny agave plant. So you need a lot of these suckers to make a batch of mezcal out of, out of that to make a Tobala. Uh, super delicious, great with cigars. Uh, if you find it, snatch it up. It's great, super complex. And uh, anybody that's been following all this craziness down the rabbit hole, uh, give it a shot, man, you'll enjoy it. Yeah, listen, you're probably going to find that. It's a big shout out for Robin and her account. You're probably going to find that at Biddy's. Yes, Guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed. They've got one of the best uh, Mezcal selections uh, anywhere. Uh, and I love going to their spots. And they have, uh, they have great people that work for them uh, at, you know, on the spirit section in the humid door. Uh, so, uh, so if you're in Robin's neck of the woods there up in the Chicago area, um, go visit Benny's, get that, get that Bozal. Uh, guarantee they probably are carrying liars, uh, if not so very shortly, because there's a lot of good business with, uh, with Southern and liars. So if you're down here, um, you know, we've got the, the total and, uh, the ABCs of the world and, um, and this total winds out in Vegas as well. Yeah, I had a question for Tim. I don't know if it was in the chat at all yet, but uh, is this the type of thing because it's non-alcohol that it would be available in like a, like a grocery store chain or a, a non-spirit store? Oh, most certainly. Um, we, you can find it at a grocery store, a uh, non-store. Yeah, exactly, because it's uh, there's no alcohol. But we, you know, we, we're with we're nationally partner with uh, Southern uh, Glazers. Just because you know we we live in we want to live in that same uh, spirit world, but the beauty of it is, um, yeah, you could buy it offline, have it anywhere you'd like. You can have it go on the beach, <laughs> pop a bottle, and there you you'd, go. You're completely fine, you know. But it Except for South Florida, where we, we there's no glass, <laughs> so you gotta just put it in a plastic container. But uh, but Tim, uh, Tim is gonna share with everybody tomorrow, so stick around. I'm I'll, I'll put up a post. Uh, Tim's going to have a little discount code for us. So uh, stick around. I'll put it up on the Frankie drinks and we'll throw it up on an Instagram post. So if you guys uh, want to get, get your hands on some of this stuff, uh, you can order it online and we'll have a special little code for you guys to use. So, uh, and with that,
Ask Frankie Drinks section. You know, we're giving away beautiful cutter. Robin, did you get your cutter? Yes, I did. Did you like it? I do. Thank you. It cuts. It cuts. <laughs> it does what and it, it says, does. and it says, and with that. It's my own if little personal notice, touch. That, th there you go. That's that's Joey's personal touch. He put a little and with that. So uh virtual happy hour, beautiful cutter, uh six and six hat, little glassware. We'll probably throw in a sticker or two if Jack is feeling generous. Uh, so, uh, all right. So first up, Chris Coulter, Ask Frankie Drinks, or Ask Really, DE Queen Robin, any advice for pairing sticks with hot drinks? Any favorites? Coffee. Absolutely. All day long. Any time of the day, any stick. Coffee always works well with any cigar. Um, that's Mike's specialty. I see him hitting likes. So I know. He hears it because Mike Lanaza drinks coffee all day long with cigars and it's the best pairing whatsoever. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to add, I'm going to pile on uh, Chris Coulter. So uh, do you prefer uh, drip coffee pour over or maybe uh, an Americano where you're using espresso as your base? What do you prefer? Well, if I'm getting coffee from Starbucks, it's espresso. If I'm making it at home, it's the Mr. Coffee specialty with a dash of creamer, or as my fiance would like to tell me, a dash of coffee with some creamer, but no one's judging here. Don't judge you. <laughs> Are you using no. a milk creamer or one of those new, uh, one of the nut creamers? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a hazelnut coffee mate creamer. All right, so. <laughs> Thank you. See, Chris, you got it from the queen herself, Queen Robin. She likes her coffee. That's her hot beverage. So, uh, Joey, what do you, what do you like as a hot beverage with with a you know besides the the forty gallons of coffee you have on a daily basis? Yeah, no, yeah, no, coffee all the time. It's the first thing in the morning. First cigar in the morning is with a cup of coffee. Uh, usually black in the office. I know my my partner in crime, uh, David Torres, will will make a French press. Of some nice Guatemalan beans and uh and it's just so I'm gonna give a shout out to to our boy, our boy David Torres, you know, still working hard, uh, and his French press skills from the time he used to be a barista. 9 you know, 30 a.m. He better be there making me coffee. I'll tell you that. There you go. So, you know, so you got a big shout out, David, from I'm from, from your boss. boy there who who <laughs> who 9 30, the French press better be ready. Boom. Make sure you're using some Guatemalan beans. I mean, that's the way we do. So, uh, Tim, I know you just, you know, you, you're enjoying your cigars, man. So when, when it's cold out in Vegas, those, you know, those couple of days, you know, what do you enjoy to, to sip out there, man? Just uh, whiskey, you know, any type of whiskey. I've been getting into mezcal. Uh, are you, are, are, summertime. It, for it, some it, reason, it, summertime, it, is, uh, summertime is mezcal. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. <laughs> There we go. So the, the question was hot drinks, Tim. So you, you, you're warming up. So uh, I guess oh, we're having hot okay. toddies. Hot whiskey toddies, everybody. Everything yeah, is hot drinking. in Vegas, man. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Everything is I hot. I mean, I love, a, I love a nice toddy for sure. But um, yeah, I, I'm good with uh, sipping a little bit of a Frey Ranch with, uh, with some coffee on the side. I, I like, I'm very much a, uh, I'm not a, as much as you know, I'm a bartender and mixologist. Uh, when I'm enjoying at home, I I'm very much a, a separate type of I don't know what you call that weirdo. But um, I like to sip on one thing, sip on the other. I think that's why I've been enjoying um, cigars as well too. It's it's another uh, yeah another thing to uh, go with the ceremony of just enjoying and relaxing. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And then I'll throw in mine, Chris. Uh, I like uh, chai tea, man. No one asked. Uh, some <laughs> all right whatever thanks chris uh enjoy your swag back robert bogner oh man robert from uh from las vegas i hope yeah, that, unless there's another uh you know robert bogner so he's asking as frankie drinks are you single really bro <laughs> i'm gonna send you a swag pack anyway but really dude seriously you know <laughs> uh, uh of course i am 
<laughs> ask my wife of 25 years if I'm single. Uh, so, so the answer is absolutely yes. I am available. Put your phone number up in the chat, Rob. I'll hit you up. So uh, next up, Sheldon Pangbird. All right, ask Frankie Drinks. How much has non-alcoholic uh, beverages evolved in recent years? So, uh, Tim, I'm going to let you answer that. And uh, I'll start with uh, uh, a lot. And uh, I think Liars is a product of that. So, uh, so Tim, hit, hit that question. How, how far have you seen it as a mixologist with, with non-alcoholic uh, offerings? Non-alcoholic offerings have evolved greatly. You know, what we knew of non-alcoholic or mocktails before was uh, whatever mixer the bartender had behind the bar. You know, the, the, the common question would be like, well, well, what color do you want it? You want it brown or pink, <laughs> you know? So now um, with liars, you know, you can do an actual cocktail. That, that, that simple evolution there, it just gives you so much options. And, um, you know, there are a lot of places that the, did their um, take on non-alcoholic non cocktails in general, but it was always something, something cool, esoteric that wasn't actually, I'm like, I want a Negroni. I want a Mai Tai. Here right. you go. Here's the best non-alcoholic Mai Tai you'll have out there. So it changed very much. And it's not just spirits. It's uh, down to like small beverages, beers, everything. So it's, it's great. Everyone's looking at wellness, um, sensibility, uh, but yet you still want to enjoy. You still want to enjoy what you yeah. used to enjoy or what can't enjoy as much. <laughs> Absolutely. I, well, I love the options. So uh, great question. Uh, next, uh, Michael Jones uh, asked, Robin, what are your strategies, tips for sticks in the frozen tundra during the winter months in the Midwest? So, uh, so I guess, uh, what are your tips for enjoying a cigar when it's below zero outside? So uh, besides smoking it in your basement? You know, Get a heater, I guess, or find some cover somewhere, an igloo. You know, I really don't have much. I smoke in my house, so I have that luxury of, uh, which is a funny story because when my fiance had started smoking cigars, we had I bought him a heater for his birthday because I'm like, you're smoking outside, you're not gonna smoke in the house. And then a couple months goes by and winter comes and I start smoking cigars and he'd come home from work and I'm, I'm smoking in the house. And he's like, what? <laughs> it's like, so we can smoke in the house now because I wasn't going to go out in the cold. So get a short stick, uh, enjoy half a stick. Don't stay out too long. It's cold. There you go, Michael. So uh, listen, get, get a heater, get two heaters. Get some Alaskan Malamutes yeah, to sit next yeah. to you. Let me add to that sucker because I was just away for the holidays up in the mountains where it was nine degrees. And I want this is a shout out to all the crybabies of cracked rappers out there. I lit up two dozen sticks in sub freezing weather and didn't have a freaking one crack on me. So I don't know what you people are doing, but I had I had perfection all the way. I was smoking everything. That's because H99s don't crack in cold. So, all right, let's move forward. Uh, and all right, our last question for today, Bill Foley as Frankie drinks, is the flavor of liars ample enough to actually mix with alcohol-based spirits for creating a lower ABV drink that tastes great? That's a great question, Bill. Uh, so, Tim, to, you know, I think you got the question, but can we use these along with a full ABV uh, to create a lower ABV option? Most certainly, most certainly that, like I mentioned, that's like my, that would be my favorite thing to do. Um, you know, of course I, I still drink alcohol, but um, I always use the Boulevardier. Um, you can mix and match it. Um, if you don't want to have as much uh, whiskey, you just go with the Rosso and the Italian orange or vice right. versa. You pick how you want to, um, I guess, build your cocktail. Yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, it definitely stands up with, uh, the alcoholic counterparts for sure yeah so think about it this this way tim it's like playing three card monty you could figure out which one you want to swap out you know like and and, and get your friends exactly. and guess which which one we swapped out you know so it's a lot of fun bill that was a great question congratulations you're going to get your swag pack and um listen now it's it's time that uh 
you know, I, I say, uh, you know, my thanks uh, to, to my wonderful guest today, my man, Tim Rita uh, from Liars, the, the wonderful and beautiful Robin St. Pierre from Drew Estate, and, the, and, the, and, and Wizard's beautiful too, in, in his own way. You know, he's got that inner beauty, you know, wait, wait, and just keep it there. Wait, 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 there's something else. Fuck. There you oh, go. There you nope. go. There you go. Second curse right, word. It was, Thank you. Second curse word. He got the first one in early and then he's got the one late. So yeah, listen, we're, 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 we're growing up here. It's 2021. It's time that we, uh, you want to hear new and, shit and, and, and we don't Yeah, exactly. No, listen, that's, he's never going to be in a show again. Uh, I listen, <laughs> That's not true. You know, <laughs> probably have him on next week. Uh, anyway, so uh, I want to thank Tim. I want to thank Robin and the Wizard. I want to thank my man Jack Hare. You know, for coming in and and making sure that dinner was ordered on time. You know, that's really one of his main roles. Not not just producing the show. It's making sure that the, the you know that 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 you know the meals get here on time. Yeah, so. Talent must be taken care of, and that's the producer's job. Number that, one. That's a producer's job. You know, I got I got my bottles in place. I got my sticks. You know, I've got the cutters and swag. He did his job, you know, and we went live and hopefully he recorded the episode. Yes. And, and he recorded the episode. I mean, what more could you ask for him? So uh, we're having, uh, uh, you know, a gr we're looking forward to a great 2021. And uh, first, I want to say, listen, still COVID. So listen, go support your brick and mortar out there. You know, go support, uh, you know, your liquor stores and your liquor shops, place a great place like Benny's and Total, um, ABCs of the world, specs of the world, and uh, and keep on supporting uh, your bartenders through USBG or any way that you can. You know, that's really important to us. Tim comes from that world. Uh, you know, I come from that world. And uh, it, it, in these times, it's a little difficult depending on where you're living. Uh, but, you know, support is always uh, is always uh, well well appreciated. Make sure you follow us on the ever growing Drew Estate Cigar, right? Instagram and Facebook. Make sure you get on there. Make sure you get Frankie drinks in there while you're at it. You know, I need some followers. I need some love. Hashtag DE4L. Stay home safe. Sticks and sips. And, uh, and with that, right? Next week, next week, we're celebrating with, uh, Little Bush Mills, we'll be, we'll be celebrating National Irish Coffee Day. So uh, make sure you jump in, stay tuned. I'll have a little something special. Robin, say something. I know, Blast right? the smoke one more time. Hold on, one Just, more time. Look at this thing. It's wild, beautiful light too. It's like, it's just, just like so beautiful. <laughs> ah, there we go. Listen, <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you everybody for joining in. Thank you so much. Uh, much appreciated. I'm Frankie Drinks, and now I'm going to sign off, and I'll see you guys next week. Good riddance. Peace.